Welcome to fourth grade multiplication of whole numbers. Let's review what third graders learned. Third graders learned that, re that multiplication is repeated addition through number lines, equal groups, and arrays. So if we look at this model, we see that two times four is thought of as two groups of four. Students also learned that arrays make squares or rectangles. And we wanna carry this over into our fourth grade learning because it lays the foundation for fifth graders when they learn multiplication and division of decimals and fractions. So let's move to what fourth graders need to know. But first, let's start with what they don't need to know. Fourth graders do not need to learn the standard algorithm for multiplication. That is a fifth grade standard, so please just let that go. Um, also, when you're sending home homework, we wanna make sure that what we're sending home is appropriate for our fourth grade standard. So consider only sending home simple multiplication facts for homework for fourth graders. Also wanna mention that lattice is not a strategy that we would use in our fourth grade units of multiplication. Um, for fourth graders, the goal is um, to go to multiplying a four digit number by a one digit number and a two digit number by a two digit number using whole numbers through strategies. So we're going to begin with a two digit by a two digit number. Our problem is 14 times 13. And we're going to begin with the concrete. So we always begin with our base 10 blocks when we're teaching multiplication. Um, this mat is a scaffold that you can use for students. Um, it will help give them an idea of what we're looking for and how we're building this concretely. Um, you can put this mat in a plastic sleeve. You could also have students draw this model. Of course, they won't have the base 10 blocks there, but, uh, or excuse me, the base 10 mat there in the middle, but they can draw this piece on a whiteboard so that they can then write the factors. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. On the side, we remember on the side and at the top are our factors, and in the middle, we're creating our product. So we have 14 groups of 13. So when we're multiplying, we're thinking first, what is 10 times 10? 10 times 10 is 100. You will see students show 100 as 10 groups of 10, which is completely fine. This is right. Ultimately though, we wanna have students be able to be efficient and show that 10 groups of 10 can be used by using this flat of 100 but this is completely accurate as well. So then we're going to say that um, 10 times three would give us our 30, or our three sets of 10. All right, so now let's transition to show this in a different way. So now I've written my um, factors, 10 plus four and 10 plus three. I've got my mat here and I have my 30. So I've got 10 times 10, and 10 times three. Gonna progress down to now I'm going to show my other factors. I've got four groups of 10, which is 40, and I've got four groups of three, which is 12. So ultimately we want students to see that 10 times 10 equals 100, 10 times three equals 30, and we wanna make sure we're trying to line this up here. I'm not doing a good job of that though. Four times 10 is going to give us 40, and four times three equals 12. So when students are adding that, we have zero plus zero plus zero plus two is going to give me my two. 30 plus 40 plus 10 is going to give me my 80, which is my eight tens, and then my 100. So my product will be 182. So let's look at this in a more complex problem. Um, we wanna show you, first of all, that um, 
our problem is becoming more complex. So definitely make sure that you're choosing your problems purposefully um, for instructional purposes. We wanna show you the difference between this scaffold and this scaffold. Um, we know that graph paper can be used um, during testing. Um, this is a great way to help students transition from um, or to that regular graph paper. This graph paper is set up um, or sectioned off into groups of 10. So this would be a good place to start and then transition to that regular graph paper without the groups of 10 that they could then use during testing to draw their models. Um, so this problem, 22 times 18, we're gonna show it how we're just drawing that rectangular array. We've got 10 groups of 20, which would be 200. 10 times two, which would be our 20. Eight times 20, which would be 160. And eight times two, which is 16. So when we add those factors together, we would have 200 plus 160 plus 20 plus our 16 which gives us a product of 396. Okay, so we just looked at a pictorial model and now we're going to transfer our base time blocks, our concrete, to our drawing. So our problem again is 14 times 13. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to think of 14 and 13 as our factors and we're creating our product in the middle. So we're thinking um, 10 times 10 is our 100. 10 times three is 30. Uh, four times 10 is 40. And then four times three is our 12. So remember, our ultimate goal is to keep this in what shape? A rectangle or a square, so students can see ooh, that you have that shape here. So let's think about what this means. This is 100, this is our 30, this is our 40, and our 12 that we showed here. So 100, 30, 40, and 12. All right, so now let's connect our drawings of our base 10 blocks to our area model. Again, we have that same square or rectangle shape. We have our factors. We're going to think of this as a two by two. So we have uh, 10 plus 14 and then 10 uh, plus three. So we have our four boxes to make our two by two. All right. So let's show what our 10, our 14 times 13 is going to look like in our area model or rectangular array. So again, 10 times 10 is our 100. I'm gonna show it both with the picture and the number. 10 times three is my 30. Four times 10 is my 40. And my four times three is my 12. And let's connect that back to my base 10 block, uh, or base 10 block drawing. Here's my 100, my 30, my 40, and my 12. And we want students to see each of these steps side by side. It helps them to make those connections. Now I wanna point out one more thing before we move on. I mentioned that with this problem, 14 times 13, we created a two by two. But remember, fourth graders can also multiply a four digit number by a one digit number. So we wouldn't call this a two by two, now we have a four by one. Showing our three down here and our 1000 plus 200 plus 20 plus five gives us our four by one. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our original problem. 14 times 13, and now we're going to show this in partial product form. Because remember, we're not teaching the standard algorithm in fourth grade. So here we go. We're going to show how four 
times three is going to equal our 12. Again, our most important thing is to make sure that we're keeping our digits lined up so when students add, they can do that efficiently. Our three times 10, or 10 times three, excuse me, is going to give us our 30. Our 10 times four is going to give us our 40. And our 10 times 10 is going to give us our 100. And when we add that up, we have two plus zero plus zero plus zero is two. 10 plus 30 plus 40 gives us our 80 or eight tens. And then our 100 and our product is 182. All right, if students need a scaffold, we can always over here on the side, we can show them that our 14 is 10 plus four and our 13 is 10 plus three. Again, connecting that back to this model that we did prior. All right, so one of the things that we also wanna show you is um, students may see this um, through the distrib distributive property in third grade, students worked with this distributive property using one digit factors. So we wanna make sure that we're taking this piece of our partial product and we're allowing students the opportunity to show our 14 times 13 as our 10 times 10, our 10 times three, our four times 10, and our four times three, because they will see it this way as well. Remember, in fourth grade, we do not teach the standard algorithm for multiplication with whole numbers.